Hey, what's up? I thought I'd make a video about tires. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover the High Ace Super Custom because that's what I have. Um, and most of the people that watch my videos either are looking at buying a Super Custom or they have a Super Custom. So if I make a video about anything else, no one really watches it. Uh, also, in saying that, a lot of the things that I'm about to say about tires obviously relates to any car on the road with tires. So even if you don't have a Super Custom van, uh, a lot of basically everything I'm about to say will still make sense. So we're going to assume that you're an idiot. Uh, just for the sake of everyone else, we're going to assume that no one else knows anything about tires. So we are going to cover just about everything there is to know about tires. Uh, that means we're going to go through the numbers, the sizes, the size of tires that you can fit on a higher Super Custom with or without a lift, uh, the types of different tires out there, uh, the load and speed ratings, and just some general advice as well. Uh, so let's get started with the higher Super Custom. What you're here for is to figure out the original tire size and the aftermarket tire sizes that you can go up to. So on the left here, you'll be able to see all of the original factory equipment uh, tire sizes that would have come with the full range of High Ace 100 series bands. Feel free to pause the video here or if you want to scope a little bit deeper or you, your model might not be listed, uh, the link to the website where all of this information can be found is in the description box below. So let's talk about sizes. Uh, so specifically the sizes that you can go up with. I've already shown you the original size tires and where you can get the original tire size information. Uh, you can also find obviously the OEM tire size on the driver's door place card. So there's a little sticker uh, on the door jam when you open the driver's door in a Toyota High Ace and that'll give you the OEM tire size as well as a load and speed index. However, because these cars are over 20 years old now, a lot of times those stickers are basically faded and if you have a white car like mine, uh, it might just be disguised in there. In fact, when I went to get the car registered and it had to have its inspection here, uh, the guys in the workshop spent a good half an hour trying to find the tire place card. When it was right there, it was just faded and they couldn't see it. So it's probably best to go to the website that's linked in the description box below to make sure you have the accurate OEM tire size. But if you do want to go for a larger tire size than the original, you have a couple of options. If you don't have a lift, and this is only relevant to the KZH 106 or the four wheel drive Toyota Hire Super Custom. If you don't have a lift, the largest tire size that you can comfortably go up to and not have any problems with scrubbing is a 215-75R15. I have heard of people going up to a 225-75R15 uh, and some of them say that they get mild scrubbing on full lock. Uh, some of them say that they get no scrubbing at all. So I can't really tell you that if you do go up to a 225-75R15 with no lift that you are definitely not going to get any scrubbing. But if you go to a 21575R15, uh, then you shouldn't have any problems. Now, if you do have a two inch suspension lift, which a lot of guys in America have, uh, you guys are lucky, you have a couple of companies out there that produce lifts for these things, uh, you can go up to a 23575R15. Now remember, the OEM size for the KZH 106 four wheel drive is a 21570R15. So you can imagine a 21570R15 up to a 23575R15, that's a pretty decent jump in size. All right, so let's talk about the four different options in terms of tire tread patterns and compounds that you have when choosing tires for a higher Super Custom or basically any four wheel drive Japanese vehicle. So you have the stock standard all season highway terrain tire. It's basically OEM on pretty much anything that comes out these days. Uh, a step above that is the all-terrain, which is now the most popular category for four-wheel drive vehicles. A step above that is the mud terrain, and then off to its own on the side is a commercial tire. And I put the commercial tire in here uh, because our vans are basically commercial vehicles in disguise. So a highway terrain tire is designed to give you optimal traction in all seasons on the road. So it doesn't matter if it's a wet road, a snowy or slippery road, uh, and even a little bit of dirt road. Like if you have a gravel driveway or you need to drive down a dirt road semi-frequently, a highway terrain tire might be just fine for that. Uh, an all-terrain tire takes that a step above. It's designed for usually 70% on-road use, 30% off-road use. 
you get far greater traction off-road when it comes to dirt roads, gravel, rocks, um, a little bit of mud and slush, uh, while still retaining really good road manners. And then a cut above the all-terrain is the mud terrain. Now with the mud terrain, that's where you make the biggest sacrifice. Uh, the mud terrains generally have really large, deep voids within the tread blocks, and that means they're quite noisy on-road. They also don't have uh, as good road handling manners, so they're not as good on the road. Uh, they don't tend to last as long as a highway terrain or an all-terrain uh, but the benefit of a mud terrain is if you spend most of your time off-road they're generally built a little bit stronger than an all-terrain tire which is one step below uh, and they tend to do their best work off the road and then let's look at commercial tires just off on the side there commercial tires are heavy duty tires uh, they're designed pretty strong just as strong as the strongest mud terrain or all-terrain tires out there but they don't have the aggressive tread pattern uh, commercial tires are designed for off-the-road use, but not off-road use. So you wouldn't take it on like a weekend hiking trail um, or through, you know, Death Valley in Arizona or into deep snow and things like that. They're really designed for vehicles like courier vans, uh, vehicles that are constantly loaded up uh, and they can do gravel roads and things like that. They're designed to have long tread wear uh, even whilst working under the harshest conditions. Uh, and they tend to do really well on the road. The trade-off of a commercial tire is you might not get the exact tread pattern that you want. So if you want an all-terrain tread pattern, but with the commercial tire's durability, there is a solution for that, but most commercial tires will only be in a highway tread pattern. Uh, the other trade-off of that is that commercial tires usually have a really high load rating, which means that if your van is pretty light, meaning you're not loaded up all the time or you're not towing, uh, it can be quite a bumpy ride and we'll get into load ratings uh, and speed ratings in a little bit so the bread and butter for basically anyone with a four-wheel drive high ace uh, or any japanese four-wheel drive or any four-wheel drive for that matter uh, is an all-terrain tire that seems to be the biggest boom uh, in the past couple of years previous to the all-terrain taking its reign as the most popular desirable tire at the moment uh, it was mud terrain tires that's what everyone wanted to run and nowadays people have seen the benefits of having an on-road tire uh, as with a mixed capability of having off-road performance and durability. When it comes to picking an all-terrain tire, really there are two things that you need to be looking out for, P and LT. You can have two exact tires from the same manufacturer, the same model of tires and the same size, but they might be vastly different. The P stands for passenger or a passenger car tire. The LT stands for light truck. That's industry terminology for heavy duty. So in a lot of cases, the P rated tire would be much cheaper than the LT rated equivalent. It also might come with a treadwear warranty, whereas the LT variant might not come with any warranty whatsoever. The difference between the P and the LT is its construction and durability. So on average, P rated tires have about four tread plies, which is the layers of belts of varying materials underneath the tire, underneath the rubber that you can see on the sidewall and on the tread, that gives it its durability. If you picture a piece of cardboard and you try piercing that cardboard with a nail, if you only have one or two sheets of cardboard that you're holding up, that nail is going to go through pretty easily. But if you have four layers of cardboard, you're going to have to push a lot harder to get through each and every single layer. And that's basically what an LT tire does. It gives you a bigger load range so you can carry heavier weights. Uh, and you get more plies in it. So for an example, a regular passenger car tire like a Toyota Camry may have four plies in it. So it might have three plies on the actual tread, two polyester and one steel, and it might have one ply on the sidewall. Uh, an LT rated tire would almost always have six plies at the very least. So you're looking at four plies on the actual tread, underneath the tread, and two plies uh, just behind the sidewall for added protection. For anyone considering a tire for the higher Super Custom, which is a pretty heavy vehicle, just over two tons empty, uh, you should really be looking at an LT tire or a C slash commercial rated tire at the very least. Now it's also important to uh, take note that by going with an all-terrain tire uh, away from like a passenger rated highway terrain tire, you are gonna cop a fuel penalty. The highway terrain tires uh, are built softer, especially if they're in the P rating, because you can get highway terrain tires in an LT rating. 
If you get a P-rated highway terrain tire like OEM equipment that comes on cars, it's going to have the least amount of rolling resistance, the least amount of noise, it's going to be the softest, giving you the most compliant ride. When you move up to an all-terrain tire, again, that tread pattern is going to have more of a uh, rolling resistance, which means there's more rotational mass to get the thing moving. That takes energy. That means it's going to cost more fuel. Uh, if you move up to an LT, which means it's got more plies in it, higher load rating, means it's going to be heavier. Again, more rotational mass, it's going to cost you more in fuel. Uh, but there is the undoubtable benefit to it, which is being able to hammer through potholes and point the nose of your vehicle basically anywhere and have that confidence uh, that you can traverse uh, any terrain and do it comfortably and safely. So let's look at what the numbers mean on the side of a tire. Uh, and we're going to take my tires as an example here. The 215 is the width of the tire in millimeters, how wide the tread footprint is. The 75 is 75% of the width. So that's the sidewall height. The height of the sidewall is the percentage of the actual width of the tire. And then the last number, the 15, is the rim diameter. So it seems like a really confusing concept, but it happens to just work really well. 215 millimeters wide, 75% of 215 millimeters tall, and it's mounted on a 15 inch rim. Uh, the next thing to look at is load ratings and speed ratings. These are extremely important, especially when you have something as heavy and as dynamic as a van. So the load ratings indicate just how much load each tire is capable of carrying. Now, every vehicle comes out with a load rating that's listed for it that should be used as the bare minimum from factory. Uh, on the case of the high super custom, the KZH 106, which we're looking at in vision, uh, the load rating is 98. Here's the strange thing. Load ratings are usually in letters, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, however, sometimes load ratings can also come in numbers and you need to look up that number to find the corresponding letter or vice versa and it confuses people because speed ratings are also in alphabetical letters so it's important not to get the two confused so i've just looked up the original load rating of 98 for the high s kzh 106 and that equates to 750 kilograms of weight that each and every one tire can carry uh, which is a fairly decent amount considering the van weighs just over two tons let's say two tons flat that gives us a good one ton of leeway uh, to load the van up and to account for any differences or abnormal situations where you might have it overloaded if you're moving house or something like that. Now, the tires that are on it at the moment have a 103 slash 106 load rating depending on the PSI of the tires or depending on the inflation pressure. The 106 translates to 950 kilograms of weight per tire. So that's 200 kilograms more per tire than the OEM load rating. Now, it's not as simple as going and finding the heaviest load rated tire that you possibly can. You would normally find uh, heavy duty all terrains to start at the load range D uh, and move up to a maximum of F. In fact, you shouldn't really see a load range greater than F anywhere. So a load range D tire is usually an eight ply tire, which means you normally get five plies uh, just underneath the tread a combination of polyester nylon and steel and then you get about three plies on the sidewall moving up from that is a load range e which normally equates to a 10 ply tire and then moving up from that is a load range f which normally equates to a 12 ply tire now the load range d is suitable for heavy suvs that tow frequently that go off-road or used under heavy duty circumstances the load range D, which is one step above the 10 ply tire versus the 8 ply, is normally for extreme towing, vehicles that are towing all the time, full size pickup trucks uh, that need to be working all the time. And a load range F is for really big pickup trucks. You're looking at dualies basically that are constantly loaded and constantly towing in the worst environments. So keep that in mind. Don't just always go for the heaviest load rating because you need to think about load ratings as springs. The heavier a tire's load rating, the harder the sidewall is going to be. The harder the sidewall is, the less flexing it's going to do, and that means it's going to become pretty uncomfortable. Think about putting the most heavy duty springs 
in a light little Suzuki hatchback. If you put too heavy a spring into that car, no matter what bump you go over, it's not going to compress. And that load, that shock, then gets transmitted throughout the rest of the car. And it can actually reduce or hurt the lifespan of certain components in that car. If you go for a too high a load rated tire, uh, when you're not adequately loaded. Okay, next up, let's look at speed ratings. So speed ratings is basically the safe, constant speed that a tire is built to withstand. The faster you go, the hotter a tire gets. You can drive around a roundabout all day with the wheels locked and turning round and round and round and round. And that tire will not overheat even on the hottest day. But you drive for 15 minutes in summer down a highway and that tire will be pretty darn hot. Hence, they always tell you to check your inflation pressures when the tire is cold. If you read on the side of a tire the maximum inflation pressure, it'll always say cold next to it meaning the car hasn't been driving. So a speed rating is important to keep the heat down if you are using the car at high speeds. And even though some cars come out with speed ratings that they might not ever potentially be able to reach, it's important not to deviate too far back from that speed rating. There's a margin of error built into those speed ratings. And if you have a very heavy van like the Hyatt Super Custom on a very hot summer's day, and you're cruising down the highway at 110 kilometers an hour, about 70 miles per hour, for extended periods of time, that additional leeway built into the speed rating means that that tire is staying cool and within its design limits. You don't want a speed rating that taps out at 110 kilometers because you only do 110 kilometers. You don't want to be on the limit of safety. So you can absolutely go back a little bit from the maximum speed rating on the high super custom it's a speed rating of s which is 180 kilometers an hour uh, or about 112 miles per hour i know unless you're a bad guy in one of those movies that seems to be able to get one of these big rig trucks up to like 300 miles an hour you're not gonna have a problem with that so you can always go down to like 160 kilometers an hour at your maximum uh, which would be a speed rating of q uh, but i wouldn't go much lower than that the good thing is a lot of the most common size uh, all-terrain tires or basically any tire in the 21575 range or the 23575 range would have a pretty decent speed rating and load rating already built into it. So you don't really have to worry about it too much, but you should keep it on the back of your mind. It's very important that you choose at least an all-terrain light truck rated tire if you are planning on using your vehicle off-road doesn't matter if it's a nicely graded gravel road that you drive on every single day to get to your home or to go visit your parents every second weekend or if you plan to do some weekend trails you need a light truck all-terrain tire on something like the higher super custom because it's a heavy vehicle the light truck construction means it'll have a higher inflation pressure than a p-rated tire that higher inflation pressure means that the tire won't be squirming underneath the van and it won't overheat. Overheating is a big problem, not just for these high super customs, but with all vehicles in general. And it's shocking just how many experts get it wrong. Obviously, when things get warm, they expand. When things get cold, they contract, like metal, like basically anything out there, and air is the same. So in the winter, when it gets cold, you'll notice that your tires might be looking a little bit lower than usual because it's cold outside. The oxygen inside the tires have contracted. When it gets hot outside, those molecules expand. This is where things go really wrong, again, with tire experts, because even the experts that think they know what they're talking about get it wrong here. They'll link a couple of videos in the description box below from a few news channels that went out to get, you know, tidbits of news to fill up the evening news slots um, from a couple of tire retailers where they're talking about uh, tire blowouts in the summer and excessive heat and most of these tire retailers say do not over inflate your tires in the summer because that's what causes blowouts that's shocking because that is the exact opposite of what causes blowouts a tire manufacturer would very rarely tell someone the actual burst pressure of an automotive car tire not even an lt rated tire or c rated tire just a normal car tire and it's usually in excess of 110 psi um, I'm, I, even I'm fearful of saying this because I don't want anyone to go out there and put in 150 PSI. 
but you're looking at about 150 to 210 psi before a tire actually bursts uh, off the rim on a, a passenger car or a four wheel drive or a van or something like that, not a big truck. The theory behind tires bursting at high temperatures is uh, misleading because when you go out and like, I'll put the description, I'll put the links in the description box below. If you watch those videos, you as an average person who sees that might think overinflation on a hot day will cause my tire to blow out. So people reduce their tire pressures. Again, a lot of people don't check their tire pressures cold. So they might drive for a little bit, get out, get some lunch, walk past the tire and they might feel that it's really warm. And they think, oh, wow, it's getting really hot. I'll reduce some pressure out of it because I watched this news clip from a tire expert who actually has a tire shop. Reduce some pressure out of the tires, it overheats on the next leg of their journey and they're in trouble. Higher inflation pressures means less heat. Uh, less heat because there's less flex in the sidewall, just like bending a paper clip. At highway speeds, uh, a tire is rotating between 700 and 800 times per mile. So if your tire's not completely round at the bottom, if you've got underinflated pressures, there's a crease in the sidewall where it's flexing. And if you're doing highway speeds, that part of the sidewall doesn't get a chance to rest like a paperclip. You're just bending it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The tire actually cracks and devulcanizes and then it bursts. So in hot temperatures, it's best to run higher inflation pressures, especially if you're heavily loaded and doing long distances uh, at high speeds. Um, but if you, if you are heavily loaded and you normally run say 34 PSI and you've got a full trunk load of luggage and maybe two or three people in the car or maybe you're towing something as well uh, or you've got a camper conversion, you might want to bump that up from 34 PSI up to maybe 38 PSI. And remember, the more you drive in the heat, the higher the pressure is going to get inside the tire. It is perfectly safe for your tire uh, to go up to the maximum inflation pressure on the sidewall. It'll be written there while it's cold. If the max inflation pressure says 40 PSI cold, and you put 40 PSI in it when it's cold, then you drive down the highway for a good half an hour, two hours, you get out, you check the pressure and it's like 60 PSI now, you don't need to freak out. The tire manufacturer knows that. Again, the burst pressure of that tire is likely triple that, so you don't need to freak out. Secondly, the next thing that can damage tires and have blowouts on highways on hot days is dry rot. So if your tires are extremely old, and they've lost the silica compound, the oils that are manufactured into the tire to keep them soft and supple. The UV rays attack that over many years and they start to crack at highway speeds that can be exaggerated and then boom, your tire will explode. If your tires are in good condition and you keep the pressures up, depending on your vehicle and the climate that you're in, you should be fine. So some general advice, don't trust tire retailers. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of companies out there that take pride in what they do. They are industry experts. They know what's best for their customers. They give their customers options. They take pride in what they do. But there are a lot of tire retailers out there, and I have personal experience because I worked at one of them for one day and I didn't go back. They don't really care. It's 2022. An industry professional is different now from an industry expert. So this was one of the largest tire franchise owned shops or franchisee shops within Australia, a very popular brand. The shop was doing about 20 sets of tires a day. And I learned that they know nothing about tires. They don't care about tires. They don't want to know about tires because they're not passionate about tires. They're not car enthusiasts. They're passionate about sales. What they did know about tires that could rattle off the top of their head was the profit margins based on what supplier or distributor gives them the best bang for their buck and puts more money in their pocket. So they might be recommending any tire to a customer, even if it's not right for that customer. You need to do your own homework now. The good thing is we have the internet uh, and you can watch certain reviews of different things and find the best tires for you. 
before you go into a retailer. If you are one of those great retailers that sells the right tires to the right people at the right price and puts them on properly, feel free to leave your comments in the box below so we know who you are and we can give you our business. Uh, this tire shop, for example, uh, wouldn't sell people the tires that they needed, just what they had in stock and what gave them the biggest profit margins. Uh, secondly, if you have to get a wheel alignment done, I would recommend getting a wheel alignment done from a suspension specialist. Uh, and I know that because the same tire shop that I worked at for one day uh, was fitting brand new tires to customers' vehicles. Some of these cars were brand new. They were about two or three years old, coming in for their first set of new tires to be replaced. So the wheel alignments were working just fine. They were all within spec on these cars. And when you do a wheel alignment on a car, you punch in the system, the make and model of the car, and you put the laser alignment uh, scanners on each wheel, the system will then tell you the parameters for each and every car that's out there. If it's a Holden Commodore, for example, you punch in the year and it'll tell you what's in and out of spec. That takes a lot of effort because they then have to bring everything into spec, caster, camber, tow, thrust for each individual car and then do a printout, which will show the before in red and the after in green, the changes that they made. And this tire shop didn't want to be doing that to 20, 25 different cars every single day. So what they did was they came up with their own template, which was all red until it was zeroed out. Zero thrust, zero toe, uh, zero caster, and uh, zero camber. And they basically went out and zeroed out every single car. I asked the owner, I was like, why are you doing this? Every car has a different wheel alignment setup, for example, a front wheel drive vehicle will usually have tow out because when it accelerates, the torque from the CV drive shafts will normally pull the tires in straight. Uh, and he said they don't have time to be spending uh, to do, to spend an hour doing a wheel alignment on each and every customer's car. They zero everything out and off the customer goes. And in his mind, zeroing everything out was the right way to do it because they're not passionate about cars. They don't know about cars and they don't care. I had about five people call me on that day saying that their car's wandering all over the place. The shop owner's answer was to tell them that the tires are new, that they need to wear in, uh, and one guy who argued that he had a proper wheel alignment done and he just happened to be driving a mint condition old 90s Hilux, uh, he had a wheel alignment done a month earlier and everything was fine, he got told that he had a buckled wheel uh, and that they couldn't do anything about it, so off he went to look for new wheels. Don't listen to the tire experts that say if you barely ever go off road, then just get a highway terrain tire because you can end up in a life threatening situation, especially if you live somewhere like here in Australia by listening to that kind of advice. And everyone seems to dish out that advice. Um, you really need to do your own homework. If you go to a tire retailer or anyone, uh, including myself, and you say, hey, Nathan, I've got a Land Cruiser. Uh, I've got two kids and my wife. We don't go off-road ever. The one question that I would ask you is, do you plan on going off-road ever? Because in a lot of these cases, you might plan to not go off-road ever. You might never plan to take your high super custom off the paved roads, but you might in the back of your mind be planning that once in a lifetime bucket list trip that'll take you out into the middle of absolute nowhere. And it doesn't really matter how often you go off-road then, if you're in the worst conditions and the worst terrain in the middle of nowhere, uh, on the worst, softest uh, highway tires. Because if a family with that Toyota Land Cruiser bought the highway terrain tires, and then three months later they packed it up with all their gear, loaded it up, put a camper trail on the back, and headed off into the middle of nowhere, you know that they're not gonna be coming out of that thing happy. They're gonna blow more than one tire, multiple tire failures in the middle of nowhere with no cell reception, they're quickly going to go through their spare, which is most likely going to be a highway terrain OEM tire as well. And it just ends up being a really dangerous situation. So even if you plan on going off road just once a year, and if that once a year trip happens to be a big bucket list trip, that's taking you far into the distances away from civilization, away from cell phone reception, things like that, get some really rugged meaty tires. It's well worth paying the slight fuel penalty throughout the year uh, to make sure that you and your family can come out alive depending on wherever you want to take that thing. Another example, that same franchise, before I spent my day there, I used to have Hilux SR5 wheels on Vision, my van. 
these Bridgestone Berg wheels came in from Japan, so I had to have my Kumho AT51 tires swapped over. Took it to the same franchisee shop, but a different shop, the same brand. And they swapped over the tires for me. When I was filming my tire review video about a year later, I noticed that the sidewall said INS on each and every single tire. Now these are symmetrical tires, which means that you can rotate them in any which way they can travel in any direction. But INS means inside. That means that the tire manufacturer has specified for those tires to be mounted on the inside of the wheel rim. And it could be for a number of different, it could be for balancing. It might take less weights to balance it if that side is on the inside. It could be a different compound, a tread compound, which means they would have put a heavier wearing compound on the outside or inside edge. Who knows? But this very popular industry expert tire retailer got it wrong on all four tires. So you need to know that when you go in to speak to an industry expert, you may not be speaking to an expert. You might be speaking to an industry professional. The industry professional is a salesman. He's not an expert. It's kind of like you going and seeing a doctor and he has the stethoscope and the white coat and the clinic and everything. But really, he's putting on a facade. He doesn't care about you and he knows nothing about medicine. He works for the pharmaceutical company and he's just going to try and sell you what he has to get rid of that day to make up his quota and his targets. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Do your homework before you go out looking for tires or you ask for anything from any of these tire shops. And if you are getting new tires, it might pay to say, hey, just give me the tires, balance them, fit them. I'll go get my wheel alignment done from my guy down the road or something. Maintenance and rotation. Uh, so it's important to take care of your tires, especially in a high super custom. Just the dynamics of this van, the weight distribution and how it likes to lean over a little bit uh, can really affect the tire wear. Usually it's the front left that cops a real beating. The rest, the other three seem to do pretty well. Uh, but if you live in North America, you may have had your wheels aligned and the crown on your roads might lean towards the right hand side. So your front right or the driver's side uh, will be the one that wears the most. When it comes to rotating tires uh, on a four wheel drive uh, and even rear wheel drive highest vans, provided your tires are symmetrical, which means they have the same tread pattern on the outside as the inside uh, and the middle doesn't change and you can change it around any direction, put it anywhere on the car that you want, uh, you should really be moving the rear tires forward and then moving the front tires back. But while the front tires are coming back, they cross over. So the front left will go to the right rear, the right front will go to the left rear, and then the right rear and the left rear will just go straight forwards. That also means that each tire gets to spend uh, a decent amount of time at every position on the car, and you should have dead even tire wear. Uh, tire rotation mileage and time frames uh, depends on how you treat your car, uh, what sort of load capacity you have and what you're carrying and the type of tires that you have. Uh, in general, I've found that when tires are new, they need to be rotated more frequently because the tread compounds are quite soft when they're new. Every tire will get harder and harder and harder as it ages, and that means it starts wearing a little bit less. It becomes a little bit hardier uh, as it ages. And so initially, I would say rotate your tires every 5,000 kilometers for the first 10, 15,000 kilometers. After that, you should be all right going every 10,000 kilometers, um, or it's just best practice to do it at least every time you service the car. Let's talk about tire lifespan. Tires that don't wear out completely uh, usually have a best before date. It's not stamped on the sidewall or anything like that. It's just best practice. And the best by date is usually between six to 10 years. Uh, ideally, you wouldn't go past 10 years old. The reason for that is rubber gets attacked by the UV light, the different heat cycles, the cold, you have brine and salt on the roads, mud and slush, maybe you drive it on the beach, um, and all of these things have a combined impact on the tires. The most important thing is there's oils and silicas. It's Yokohama who actually puts orange oil into the tire compounds that they make, um, and it keeps the tires moist, basically. It keeps them looking nice and black, uh, especially throughout heat cycles as the tire heats up in summer rolling down the highway. Um, it basically oozes out all of these different oils and keeps them soft. And as tires age and as they go through all these different chemicals and different scenarios um, and then get attacked by the UV light, they tend to dry out and hence
hence you get dry rot. Um, and dry rot basically means that the tire gets so dry, uh, like old leather that's just been left outside, begins to crack and split. Uh, and once the tire starts to crack and split, it becomes unsafe. Um, but you know, if a tire is kept indoors, if it's very, very rarely used on that car and it's kept clean, it doesn't drive on salt and it doesn't go on the beach and it doesn't get cut up off road. In a lot of cases, that tire is probably um, the example that will make it past 10 years. You also have to realize that uh, little screws and things like that that go into the tires and you may have had re uh, repaired could have gone through the steel belt in the tires. And over the years, um, the steel belts inside could rust out. And from the outside, you might have really good tread, um, but on the inside, it could be falling apart. And you don't want to find out with your family in the car on your summer break doing 110 kilometers an hour uh, around a corner. So bear in mind, how do you know how old your tires are? Stamped on the sidewall. There's a four digit code. If it's less than four digits, you need new tires because that's the old system that's really old now already. So if you've only got three digits, um, it's right next to the DOT or Department of Transportation code. Um, and it looks like this. Uh, so if you've got three digits, your tires are already too old. But essentially the four digits mean uh, the week and the year uh, that the tire was built. So in the case of Vision, the first two numbers are the week uh, and the last two numbers are the year that the tires were built. And I can start counting from there on. If I don't end up wearing these tires out within the next seven or eight years, um, I really need to start shopping for some new tires. So it's all good and well for me to sit here and share my knowledge with you and my passion for cars, which is basically everything. I do obsess about everything. I love cars. I love every type of car out there. Um, I thought I'd make some recommendations for you, uh, depending on different budgets um, and different types of tires that I can recommend within the all-terrain category. Um, so for the budget orientated, the Kumho AT51, which is on Vision at the moment, and the Kumho AT52s. The AT51s are more of an aggressive all-terrain pattern. You can uh, put them down in the same sort of aggressiveness and durability uh, as the Toyo Open Country 2s, which are now replaced by the Open Country 83s. Kumho AT52s are more of an OEM style all-terrain tire. They're less aggressive. Uh, they should be much quieter on the road, not that the AT51s are noisy. Um, you should get a longer tread wear out of them and they might be just a little bit better in the wet and in the snow. For the mid-range tires, uh, the Hankook Dynapro uh, AT2, also known as the RF11 in certain markets, is a really good OEM style tire. Um, the tread blocks are quite close together, very quiet, very good uh, at tread wear, very long lasting. Um, the trade-off is it's not gonna be as good off-road, uh, uh, but it will be good for highway use predominantly with the added durability if you do have to go off-road every now and then. Again, in the mid-range, the Falcon Wild Peak 83W is another great tire. Good sidewall strength, good off-road capability, good road manners, um, and it's not very noisy. Uh, my pick of the mid-range bunch would have to be the General Grabber ATX. First and foremost, it does pretty much everything the others do, um, but it is slightly noisier if that's going to um, bother you. You might need to take that into consideration. Uh, but it does have some of the deepest tread wear on the market and it also looks incredibly good. And now, if you want to spend the big bucks, if you just want the most premium tires out there, uh, two options for you, you knew this one was coming, BFG KO2s, uh, the granddaddy of all tires, uh, recently revised, uh, going from the KO to the KO2, and then revised again uh, for a new compound, because once they release the KO2, uh, people were reporting really uneven tread wear, and the tires are wearing out extremely quickly. Um, they've got a new tread compound on it now, so that's fixed a lot of those issues. They are quiet, they do well in the snow, in the rain, in the wet, and the highway. Super tough, super durable, um, and basically the Rolls Royce of all terrain tires. If you're not into that sort of aggressive driving and, and off road use, you want good all terrain performance, but you want the, the best highway performance with the all terrain durability. Uh, you can't go past the continental terrain contact, uh, all terrains. All right, that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.